Hi, this is Matt from YStick Engineering, and today we're going to be doing the install of our increased volume fuel tank for the Polaris Pro R four seater. To begin, we're going to start by removing the two rear seats, followed by the bottom seats. Using a pick, you have to remove the E-clips that hold on the pins that hold the rear seats down. Now that you've got the seats removed, we're gonna remove these panels and these side panels as well so we can access the bolts to these seat belts so we can flop the seat belts over and out of the way. To remove these two seat belt bolts, we're going to use a deep 18 millimeter socket and a 16 millimeter wrench. Next, we're gonna remove this panel here and you're gonna need a T40 Torx bit. Once you got this panel off, Next, we're gonna be removing this center console with these clips here, here, and here, and here on each side. And then we're also going to be removing the cup holder to allow for this to exit a little easier. Using a 10 millimeter socket, we're gonna remove the two bolts on each side in order to remove the center console. To be able to remove the center console, we're gonna remove the bolts holding on the seat brackets. It also makes it easier later to remove the floorboards. So we're gonna start with that. It's gonna be a 13 millimeter wrench and 13 millimeter socket. Now that we got the seat brackets removed, we're gonna remove the center console. Using a T40, we're gonna remove these six screws here that hold the plastic floorboard to the frame. Next, we're gonna remove this aluminum scatter shield and there are three bolts holding it on. There's two T40s up here and one T27 down here. Next, we're gonna be removing the frame in order to do that, we have five bolts. They are 15 millimeter socket and a 15 millimeter open end wrench. Next, we're gonna be removing the two floorboards. In order to do that, we have six T40 bolts we need to remove. Two here, two buried under here, and two up in here. Next, we're gonna prep the fuel tank for removal. To do that, we're gonna remove the electrical connections, the fuel line, and the EVAP lines that go to the EVAP. Next, we're gonna remove the inlet tube for the clutch cover. Starting with a flat blade screwdriver, we remove this clamp here and then this clamp here. Next, using a 13 millimeter socket, we're gonna remove the strap holding the fuel tank down. There's a bolt down here, up front here, and over here. Of 
before you completely pull it off, you're gonna wanna clean around the bottom of the fill neck in order to not get any dirt down inside the tank. Before you remove the fuel tank, you're gonna wanna put something and cap this off in order to make sure you don't get any dirt in there or have any fuel slosh out while you're removing the tank. If you can, it's best if you can burn all the fuel off or remove all the fuel out of the tank first before you take it out and make it easier. Now, if you have a model that has a charcoal canister like this one here, you're gonna need to relocate it in order to get the tank bolted in here. In order to do that, we're gonna need to remove these lines Once the lines are removed, there is a tongue underneath here. You're gonna pull it up and you're gonna push off the canister. You can see it there, you pull that up. After that, we're gonna be removing these three rivets by drilling them out through the center and then popping this bracket off. And then we have an adapter bracket that this is gonna bolt to and bolt in back here. We'll show you that in a second. After you get the black bracket out of the car, you're going to secure it to the supplied bracket that we give you with the studs in it. Uh, it's going to look like this when you're done. You're going to use supplied bolts that we give you. Make sure you put the button heads on the side of the bracket that came off the car and then use the supplied nut to go on the other stud. Once you do, it'll look like this. You'll have three studs protruding from uh, this side. And when you do, it's gonna go into the three different uh, holes that are here. Before you can do that, you're gonna to have to remove this canister and the two bolts that secure it back here to get this in. Once you do, this just slides in here, right through those holes, and you'll secure it from the backside with the nuts and washers that we give you. In order to secure this canister, which we had to remove in order to put our adapter bracket on, there are studs from our adapter bracket that come through and you can reinstall this over the studs. In order to do that, you gotta cut off this nipple and remove these little metal nuts that are on here. And once you do, it'll go right over the studs and you can use the nuts that we supply in the kit and it'll go right back in its original location. Okay, lastly, in order to install the charcoal canister, once you got the bracket in place, you're gonna slip it up inside lock it in, and then go ahead and reinstall your hoses. Next, we're gonna be removing this ring to remove the pump. Once you get the pump removed, we're gonna be saving this filter and we need to remove this hose from the line and from the filter. Now we're gonna remove this hose from the filter. It's applied in your kit. You're gonna receive this fuel safe hose. We're gonna attach this to the filter that you removed. Then we're gonna clamp it. Next, you're gonna use this stainless piece. This helps keep the filter down at the bottom of the tank on the driver's side. And we're gonna zip tie this filter to the stainless part. Once you got this zip tied, you wanna be sure that the orientation of the filter is correct. The long way of the filter is supposed to be lined up with the mark that says front on the front of the part and that needs to be pointing forward towards the front of the car. When you install it, you need to install the hose first and get the hose up inside and the hose needs to go inside and to directed towards the other pump or the other side of the tank on the passenger side of the tank up and over the hump. There's an internal hump of the tank you wanna go up and over that hump to get it towards the other 
to get it towards the pump. Once you have it inside, then you can loop the filter inside. And you can put your hand in the other end of the tank to make sure that you feel around for the hose. If you've done it right, you'll see the hose on this side and you will see the arrow pointing forward on this side. Once you got the filter holder installed, you're going to install the O-ring and the ring supplied in the kit and tighten it down. Once we've got the stainless filter holder installed on the driver's side, then we're going to move to install the pump. We're going to take the rubber hose that's inside the tank, pull it out. Once it's up and out, slide on a clamp. And then you're going to insert the black plastic tube from your pump into the line. Once it's clamped, we're going to install the tank with the float first, and you got to make sure that the nipple for the fuel outlet is pointing towards the rear of the car. And reinstall with your factory O-ring and ring. Next, we're going to install this tank vent. This is designed that if you should roll the car over, when you tip it over upside down, a ball closes off the vent and you won't leak fuel out. So we're gonna install that with uh, Teflon tape in this port here. And you want the port facing towards the driver's side of the car. Next, we're gonna install the tank in the car. Before you do, you wanna make sure you put both straps under the tank before you place the tank in the car. Under the, each strap, there is an arrow and that you need to make sure that the arrow is pointing towards the front of the car when you install the strap under the tank. To get the tank in the car, you want to have it in this orientation with the long part of the front of the tank down. Once you get in the car, the long part needs to go forward and then it'll allow the back of the tank to clear and then the back of the tank goes down and under the plastic. In the kit, you're gonna be supplied with a drill guide. How it works is you put it down, lined up with these sets of holes here, reuse a factory bolt, screw it in, and you gotta make sure that when it's in, the arrow is pointing towards the front of the car. And then also you need to be able to read the L for the left side of the bracket and tighten it down. When you do, you drill the hole just to the right of the L and you need to make sure you drill it all the way through both walls of the square tubing all the way out the other end. When you do, you need to make sure you're very straight Otherwise, the two holes on the top and the bottom will not be aligned correctly. When you're done with that one, you can move it to the next hole on the left side in the same orientation, arrow pointing forward, L legible. Once you're done with the left side, then you're gonna take it and you're gonna flip it over and move it to the holes in the middle on this side. And you're gonna use the arrow pointing forward and the R is gonna be legible. And then you're gonna use the hole just to the right of the R. You're gonna drill that hole all the way through both walls of the tubing, and then the same in the back. First, you're gonna drill an eighth inch hole through the pilot hole, through both walls of tubing on all four holes. Once you do that, you're gonna drill the tops of all four holes in the top of the tubing with a seven eighths hole saw. After that, you're going to drill the bottom hole, all four holes, is going to be a 27 64. You need to make sure 
that you look for any areas that any metal will be scratching the tank or, or trying to rub the tank. Uh, one place that we found that is a potential area would be this loop, the bottom corners of this loop. And this loop is the rear all the way to the right side of the car over near the fill neck. And we just knock the corners down really quick right here and here. You're gonna take a tape measure, measure from the outside. This is for the outside of the car. So this is the passenger side floorboard from this corner in seven inches. And it's gonna be two and a half inches wide. And then you're gonna draw a line about half inch down from this surface. Same over here. And it's gonna come all the way to the back wall and up about a quarter inch. And for the driver's side, it's the same as the passenger side. You're gonna measure seven inches from the outside of the car side, seven inches in, and you're gonna be about a half inch down quarter inch up, two and a half inches wide. After you get the fuel tank installed, we're going to adapt the EVAP line to our rollover valve. To do that, we have in the kit these two clamps, a little piece of hose, and a barb to Bundy connector. So we're gonna put the hose on the Bundy connector and then we're gonna put on the clamp, put on the other clamp, slide it over the barb. Adjust the clamp and go ahead and insert it into the EVAP line. Make sure it's fully inserted lock it down and you're done. After that, you're gonna install your scatter shield, fuel line and hook up your electrical and leave this loose and it'll be zip tied later to the frame. Next, we're gonna reinstall both floorboards. Next, after you put the floorboards in, we're gonna reinstall the factory frame above the tank. Make sure you have everything buttoned down, zip tied, that's gonna be below the frame and the frame is gonna go on top of the bolts and the straps. Be sure that the, the bolts and the straps come up through the bottom of the frame. Once you got the frame sitting on top of the bolts and in the uh, frame on the two sides, uh, you're gonna install the washers on top of the bolts that came up through the frame. And then using a magnet, you can install the nut and get it started on top of the bolt, use a socket to drive it in. Now, before you tighten these down, you're gonna to wanna to reinstall the bolts in the frame, all five of them. Once those are all in, then you can tighten those down and then tighten up the strap bolts. Next, we're gonna be reinstalling the fuel fill neck. First, we're gonna be removing this. We're not gonna need that anymore and we need to shorten the hose to four and a half inches long. I've already done that, so we're gonna go ahead and install it now. At this point, now you can put all your plastics back in over the fuel tank and get ready to move to the next phase, which is installing the clutch air tube. Next, we're gonna be installing the inlet air tube for the clutch. Supplied in the kit, you have some silicone. And to secure that onto the existing factory tube, we're gonna to need to reuse 
this clamp off of the tube that you removed that you no longer need. Go ahead and slide that over this guy. And now there's a part number printed on uh, this piece of silicone and the other piece of silicone that's in this tube kit. And the part number is gonna be towards the front of the car. Once you position this, you can insert it. Once you know you have it all the way on, you're gonna rotate this tube to make sure it's in the center of this opening. And go ahead and tighten down the clamp. Next, we're gonna be installing this nameplate that has the hole in it that allows the tube to pass through. And we're gonna to need to grab the clips off of this piece and transfer them onto this piece. Once you've done that, we're gonna transfer the 12 volt port from the car into here. Pop it out, remove the two electrical connections and leave them there. There is a locating tab on here that will locate in a notch inside here. Locate that and push it in. Then you're going to slide the cover on, reconnect the electrical connections. And the cover goes in the top first, up under the top, and then pushes in the bottom. Next, you're gonna grab this tube supplied in your kit, along with a four and a half inch hose clamp. Slide the hose clamp over the silicone. And slide the tube inside the silicone. And you're gonna slide it in until these holes line up down here and go ahead and reinstall the factory bolts. And go ahead and secure this clamp when you're done securing the pipe. Next, you're going to install this last silicone piece in the back. You're going to want to put the part number forward. And we're going to reuse this wing nut clamp to secure it to the clutch cover again. So first, you're going to start by putting the clamp on the silicone and installing it on the tube. And go ahead and get it rotated where it lines up with the clutch cover. Put on your wing nut clamp. Install it on the clutch cover and then secure the other clamp. Finally, you're gonna install this clutch cover panel that we have supplied in the kit. You're gonna to need to transfer these spring-loaded clips from your old one to this one, and then reinstall just like factory. After you get the tube in, the last thing to do is reinstall your factory seats and harnesses, and that concludes the installation of our extended fuel tank kit. We'll see you guys on the next build.